Cheers, and welcome to Americans Learn. My name is Lauren, and today I am looking at a fat electrician video. This is America's Unhinged Nuclear Testing Operation Plumbob. Kit has already reacted to this video, but I'm curious. <laughs> um, also, sometimes I want to watch the things that he's also watched, and like, we do some, we do some cross viewing sometimes here. So I'm fascinated by this. I love Nick's videos. I think that these are very interesting um, in general. And I'm just I'm curious to see where the hell this one's going to go. Um, I know there's a couple of like longer ones that people want me to look at, and I will. But today is not that day. Today it is almost five. I've been filming since 1230. And... Uh, <laughs> I just don't really have it in me to do anything longer than 20 minutes. On a day that I do, like, a billion videos, like, nine or ten, I just, I'm like, eh, I keep them shorter. Um, so that's that's just what you're getting from me today. I needed to get so I needed to get a bulk, a bulk of videos videoed. So today is a shorter video from him, but I will be getting to some of those longer ones um, in the future. So before we, that was it, that was it. Show... Fat Electrician, some love. The Fat Files, his other channel, show them some love. Uh, don't forget to like and comment here as well, and let's go. Okay, I finally got around to doing that video on that time America launched a manhole cover in outer space with a nuclear bomb. Bomb, and it turns out that's actually the lesser of two interesting parts of this story because America also dropped a nuclear bomb on top of six people to prove that nukes were safe. What? Operation Plum Bob, the professional way to explain it would be to say that it is a bunch of nuclear testing that was carried out by the United States government in the late 1950s in the deserts of Nevada. However, in reality, it is more akin to the United States government dicking off with nuclear warheads in the desert like they're a bunch of rednecks on 4th of July with fireworks. Huh. Who shoot fireballs at? Chowder? Is that him? But first, a word from our sponsor. Oh, Nicholas. Yeah. Is this my Father's Day present? Well, I do have a surprise for you. I like her little pencils. Words are maxed out. And her, and her calculator. <laughs> I'd like to go shopping. This video is brought to you by Henson's Shaving. Okay, here's the deal. Henson's is a family owned machine shop that makes parts for the aerospace industry. There's literally parts on the Mars rover that these guys made. And one Sick. day they woke up and they're like, hey, we're just gonna make the most precise safety razor on the market. And this is it. This is all they sell. It comes in aluminum or titanium. If you wanna pay extra, it comes with a little stand. And then they also sell the razor blades so you have a one-stop shop. Not because their razor blades are proprietary because this thing will take any shaving razor blade on the market. You don't have to buy their proprietary cartridge. You don't have to sign up for their monthly delivery thing no you buy this one time and then you can put any five cent razor in it and shave for the oh that's kind of cool so the product itself is fantastic but more importantly the company is awesome because every time a youtuber does an ad like this they get sent a little media packet full of talking points what to say what not to say and so on now i'm not supposed to disclose this but the brief that i got for henson's basically said there is no script do whatever you want we trust you also in the first paragraph they said this quote if for whatever reason you don't get a good shave with our product, please let us know. If we can't help you, then don't endorse us. We think we've made one of the very best razors in the world. Oh, if you disagree, good for them. we'd rather not ask you for a non-genuine endorsement. Good for Henson. This is great, and this is the type of company that you actually want to give your money to. I'm going to have a link for them down below. Let's get back to the video. All Let's right, just I'll see. Hold on. I want to see, because like this might actually... This came out, okay, about a month ago. So this one, it might still be working. So make sure that you check out that link, guys. Just, and let me know if it worked. Operation Plum Bob takes place in 1957. There was a total of 29 nuclear explosions and they were testing all kinds of different stuff. They had biomedical testing going on with pigs, seeing how radiation affected them and at what distance. Then More they pigs. were covering the pigs with blankets, seeing what materials blocked the radiation, what materials Not didn't. blankets. Conducted experiments on 18,000 US service members, basically having them dig a trench off in the distance and hide in it while they detonated a nuclear warhead to see how they held up. And then they oh no, poor guys. Different materials trying to see which building 
building materials blocked radiation the best and which ones blocked them the worst. Now, when this started, all the bombs that were being detonated were being detonated off the top of a tower or from a high altitude weather balloon. They were just detonating nuclear warheads into the open atmosphere. What could possibly go wrong, right? And the important context here is that it's 1957. The world became aware of nuclear weapons 12 years prior at the end of World War II. And a couple years after that, the USSR had their own nuclear weapons. We are well off into the Cold War and nuclear hysteria is at an all time high. So by this point in time, the American general public doesn't just understand that nuclear weapons make a really big boom. They also, to some degree, also understand radiation and nuclear fallout. Okay, so that's something at least. What's going on at this point. I mean, they've even got cartoon turtles teaching kids what to do in case a nuclear bomb gets dropped near them. Yep. And cover. So naturally, when everybody finds out the government... Yeah, ducking under your, your wooden desk in your, your uh, cinder block school... That'll save you. I mean, is strapping nukes to balloons and blowing them up in the desert. There's, there's quite a bit of concern, you know, like, hey, maybe that's a bad idea. And then everybody maybe. finds out this is actually how the government's planning on protecting them from a nuclear strike from the Soviet Union by taking one of our nukes and blowing up the Soviet nuke in the sky right above everybody's heads. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the Genie air-to-air -air missile. Okay, you gotta remember, this is the 1950s. There's no intercontinental ballistic missile that can reach from the Soviet Union into mm. America yet. So this means that the only nuclear strike risk really comes from Soviet Ships. bombers flying into America. Oh, bombs, okay, that bombs. makes sense too. So we okay, gotta right. to shoot down these planes, right? Obviously. Problem, again, it's the 1950s. There's no sophisticated anti-air systems yet, okay? There's not really any air-to-air -air missiles that our fighter jets can shoot accurately. So the going theory was that we're gonna use this nuclear fucking missile and shoot it at an entire formation of Soviet planes and blow all of them up at once. Genius! Okay, and on a rudimentary Great. level, this makes complete sense, right? Yeah, I guess. To be accurate, you increase the margin of error. All right, if so like a shotgun with a wide blast, or like if you're me in a video game, uh, flamethrower, you know, just like, it's like, look, I can't hit that headshot, babe. So I'm just gonna get all of you. Bomb, boom, you know, I get it. I see it, what, I get it, I get it. I'm with you, I understand. 1950s, I get it. <laughs> For the first time ever in my life, I get it. 1950s. Shooting a pistol, maybe grab a shotgun, it's easier to hit your target. However, what they've went and done with the Genie missile might be a little bit of overkill because what they've essentially said is, well, I'm not very accurate with air-to-air -air missiles for shooting down planes, so instead, I've opted to create a spawn point for the fucking sun. So naturally, <laughs> absolutely terrified, and the government's like, guys, guys, calm down. It's gonna be completely fine. There's no, you know what? I'll just prove it to you. Give me five volunteers and a camera guy, but don't tell him what he's doing. On July 19th, 1957, the United States government detonated a Genie air-to-air -air nuclear missile with a 1.5 kiloton warhead directly above the heads of five U.S. service members that volunteered to be there and a camera guy that was not informed of what he was doing until a couple hours beforehand. I'm out. What? You cannot pull out of this. I'm pulling out. We're way too deep to... He's the camera guy. Isn't there like a, a a theory that the camera guy always survives? Pull out. I'm pulling out. No, we are not. You are leaving it in. I've been pulling out for years, son. And in your head, you're probably picturing like five dudes in hazmat suits with a welding mask. No. no it's literally five bros in their military uniforms standing in the- well, Only one of them thought to bring shades. Good for him. Middle of the desert with no glasses, making direct eye contact with a nuclear explosion while one of them is holding a sign that says ground zero population five because that shit's funny. That is fucking funny. <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah, that's funny. We felt a heat pulse, a very bright light. A fireball, it is red, the sky looks black about it. It is boiling above us there. It is rapid. Excuse me, color, there is the ground wave. It is over, folks. It is tremendous, directly above our heads. Erect, erect. Okay, now let's just take a minute. And he sounded a little bit like uh, Frankenstein there. It worked, it worked, exactly. <laughs> the fact that you've probably just witnessed the most testicular fortitude ever captured on camera. Maybe. Secondly, let's also admire BDE the, for sure. the sign that says Ground Zero Population 5 is not only funny at face value, but it's hilarious that they only counted the five of them in the camera. Right, and, and not the, camera not the man cameraman. Itself, because even back in 1957, they knew that the cameraman never dies. 
<laughs> yes, see? Boom. Drink every time I make the joke first. I'm so glad that he also said it. I'm actually like Frodo Baggins. And out of respect for them being, to the best of my knowledge, the only six people that have ever volunteered to have a nuclear warhead dropped directly above their foreheads, I'm gonna go ahead and read their names off. Uh, the cameraman's name is George Yoshitake, and the five service members are as follows. Colonel Sidney Bruce, Lieutenant Colonel Frank Ball, Major John Hughes, Major Norman Bodinger, and Don Luttrell. Apparently the cameraman, Mr. Yoshitake, had filmed a bunch of other nuclear tests in the past, and he thought that this was gonna be no different than all the other ones, you know, where he's miles and miles away just filming a mushroom cloud, and he didn't know that they were gonna be dropping the bomb directly above him until like a couple hours beforehand, and he was already there. After arriving to the- And then he's like, well, might as well. It was gonna go down. And according to him, he was pretty much completely unfazed. He did not care at all. And he was 100% game to partake in this experiment, which I think we can all agree is gangster as fuck. This is what I picture. What did you picture? I walk in there like a fucking gangster. And then he goes on to live a normal life until he passed away in 2013 at the- What is, what movie are all of those clips from? Like, I know that it's a, you know, one of the, obviously one of the Franco Rogan flicks, but like what- which one? Not that I'm going to watch it, because I'm not, because I've tried watching some of them and I didn't really like them, but like, I'm curious. Age of 84. And the other five service members that were also involved in this- Good for the cameraman. All lived full happy lives. As far as I could tell, the youngest any of them passed away was 71, and the rest of- What happened to their kids, though? Isn't that a thing? Like, you get irradiated and it can pass off- problems to your children them all lived into their 70s and while it's great that they were all okay the pr stunt itself wasn't really that effective because the general public wasn't swayed very much by it they still wanted them to stop blowing up nuclear bombs all the time shock so the u.s government's like fine fine we will we'll stop blowing up so many bombs in the desert and the american people are like and above the desert <laughs> it's like it's like nice try with your sneaky lawyer language military i see what you did there you're not gonna fool me with that one again Nowhere near us, please. Thank you. Goodbye. Hey, okay, fine. And above the desert in the atmosphere and in the ocean. <sighs> fine. We won't, we won't detonate nuclear bombs in the ocean either. And that is the story of how nuclear testing finally came to an end. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, the government then decided to opt for the loophole and they were going to bore a 500 foot deep hole in the middle of the desert so that they could blow up a nuke underground because nobody would be mad because people were only mad about on the surface, in the atmosphere, and in the ocean. Surely, blowing one up underground wouldn't be that big of a deal, right? I mean, what could go wrong? Delete me! What are you doing? I already did the ad. Uh, Delete me's gonna do every episode from now on. Really? Yeah. Wait, how much are they paying? Sick. Don't worry about it. Anyways, you guys know the deal by now. It's pretty straightforward. You give Delete Me money, they turn around and they make sure the data brokers on the internet aren't selling your personal information. And after they get it all taken down initially, they continue to monitor it and make sure nobody else starts selling it in the future. So if you're interested, I'll have a link and a discount code down below. Let's keep going. I mean, I'm not an overly smart guy or an explosions expert or anything, but I mean, off the top of my head, I've got some concerns. Primarily, I've seen the cinematic masterpiece Armageddon where Bruce Willis can <laughs> work on an oil rig are easier to train to be astronauts and teaching astronauts how to drill a fucking hole. I mean, that was the entire premise of the movie. Drill a hole, stick a nuke down it, blow the planet you're on in half. I understand 500 feet probably isn't deep enough for that to be realistic, but still, nothing good can come of this. You're gonna like piss off King Kong or unleash that Balrog thing that killed Gandalf in Lord of the- Yeah, you will. I think that, doesn't Godzilla live underground sometimes? I think he's the one you'll piss off. I was thinking about Armageddon and I was like, I decided, I think at one point I had decided that the reason they did the oil riggers as opposed to astronauts is because that they valued the astronauts more highly. <laughs> like, because they're not blue collar workers and, you know, fuck them apparently. I think that's what I decided at one point. <laughs> it was just like, it's because they don't, the astronauts are elite or something. <laughs> I have no idea. I don't know. I've only seen Armageddon once and it was like, so long ago. I was like a teenager. It was, um, so I, I don't know. 
the ring. Something bad is going to happen. Now, luckily, they're not planning on detonating a nuclear warhead in this hole. They're just planning on blowing one up. And what I mean by that is the, the premise of this experiment was basically, remember, we're worried about the USSR bringing bombers, planes, and dropping a nuclear bomb on America. And we're planning on shooting those USSR bombers down. Essentially, we're going to blow up those planes that have a nuclear weapon on board. They want right. to know what happens when you blow up a nuclear weapon with a conventional type bomb or missile, right? So they're okay. going to stick a nuclear warhead in the hole with another bomb and they're going to blow up the conventional bomb and see if that blows up the nuclear bomb as well because we need to know that. And the Okay, you know what? The thing is, the problem with all of this is they need to know that. <laughs> they do need to have that information. It's just so so dangerous it's like you know you like oppenheimer and crew opened up a whole can of worms with the these nukes and like it's one of those like once it's once it's been taken out of the box you can't put it back like a sleeping bag it just lives outside now because you can't scrunch it back up again and and it's just like so now that this it's been opened up it's on the table it's it's you're boned <laughs> like you and you do need to have this information which makes it really complicated theories that the nuke is not going to explode because nuclear bombs have to be set off in a very particular way and if they don't get set off in that exact way there's safety measures that are actually supposed to kill the nuke rather than set it off but that's all theoretical and there's only one real way to actually test it right you're gonna back up grab yeah, a I guess. world star and see what happens so that's exactly what they do july 26 1957 they have the first underground nuclear test ever known as pascal a takes them all day to set it up they got to lower the device down this hole they get everything ready then on top of the hole you know in case the nuclear bomb does go off they lower a five foot thick slab of concrete that weighs thousands and thousands of pounds and then on top Dang. of the hole they have some kind of lid i'm not sure what material it was they didn't say but sitting on top of the lid there was a bunch of sensing equipment because remember they're not expecting a big explosion they're expecting a really small explosion and they want to get as much data from it as possible <laughs> so they have like sensors and cameras okay down the hole through this lid and i will now let the head scientist in charge bob brownlee take the story from here and i quote they finally got it down the hole, by my recollection, about 10 o'clock at night or so. There wasn't much time to go back to Mercury, go to bed, get up the next morning and shoot it. So somebody said, why don't we just shoot it now and then go in? And it was the world's finest Roman candle because at night it was all visible. Wow. Blue fire shot hundreds of feet Fuck. in the air. Everybody was down in the area and then they all jumped up, jumped in their cars and drove like crazy, not even counting who was there and who came out of the area. Uh, Great. So safety equipment didn't work. The nuclear part went off, generating an explosion about 50,000 times bigger than they were anticipating. Great. Apparently the explosion was so large that seismic equipment from all over the world could sense this explosion. You know, Holy shit. Seismic equipment being the shit they used to detect earthquakes. Holy Another shit. It was present, described it as and and I quote, the biggest damn Roman candle you ever saw. It was beautiful. Big blue glow in the sky. And because of this, the United States government comes to the realization, okay, maybe underground nuclear testing isn't that great of it. Bad. Guys, uh, they redid oh. the exact same experiment like a month later, August 27th, 1957. And they didn't really change a whole lot about the experiment. They took the device, they stuck it down the hole, they put thousands of, of pounds of concrete directly on top of it. And then the only thing they did change was instead of whatever lid they were using before that they could like put sensors through and shit, they went and tried to control the explosion by getting a 2,000 pound manhole cover and then they welded it shut over the top of the hole. They then took the best high speed camera they could find and aimed it at the manhole cover because if the safety device failed again, whatever happens to the manhole cover was, and I quote, scientifically interesting, a.k.a. They're just doing MythBuster shit with DoD. They really, really are. The device fails. The nuclear portion goes off. Oh god! Insight, what happened is when you have a nuclear bomb go off with thousands of pounds of concrete directly on top of it, 
That concrete is instantly vaporized and turned into gas. Fuck. And that gas is pretty also instantly superheated and superheated gas expands a lot. And this is an enclosed environment because they welded the man. No! If you're not picking up what I'm putting down, the scientists just inadvertently turned the planet into a fucking potato gun and launched this 2000 pound manhole cover, presumably into outer space. Yes, please. Oh God, I hope it's still going. <laughs> Start asking the question that everybody wants the answer to. How fast do you think that manhole cover was going? So they go to the high speed camera. Okay, this camera is taking one frame per one thousandth of a second. Okay, it's a lot of fucking pictures. The manhole cover appears in one singular frame and that is it. So because it was only captured by a single frame and not multiple frames, they can't calculate how far it was traveling over a period of time. So all they can calculate is the minimum speed that it would have to be going to only oh be captured God. by a single frame in the span of the camera shot. And the calculation they came up with was that manhole cover was moving at least 150,000 miles an hour. That is Holy shit. I really hope it's still going. <laughs> like, there's a lot of room in space. I hope it's like just floating out there having its best manhole life. Mach 195. It is 195 times faster than the speed of sound. It's and crazy. This, is that this happened prior to Sputnik 1, meaning that if this manhole cover <laughs> made it into outer space, it was the first man-made object to ever make it into outer space. Huh! It didn't make it into outer space. It would have burnt up in the atmosphere. Not necessarily. Huh. Oh, shit, you're right. I completely forgot that every single meteorite that's ever come into the Earth's atmosphere is burnt up completely and never actually makes it to the ground. I'll be right back. I've got to go tell all the dinosaurs to stand up and quit being babies because clearly <laughs> right i was gonna say the dinosaurs would beg to differ about that bullshit couldn't find any dinos guys they're dead this <laughs> Right, for multiple reasons. For one, a meteorite's never been made out of 2,000 pounds of refined steel. For two, a meteorite's moving at about 30,000 miles an hour when it collides with the Earth's atmosphere. This thing's moving at 150,000 miles an hour. Slow ass meteors. 62 miles up, okay? This thing made it to outer space in a second. Even friction. What the fuck was that? <laughs> The atmosphere is nothing like a meteorite, right? A meteorite is a rock traveling through the vacuum of outer space. With this was propelled. This was like slingshotted into... Please be in space and please be still going. Please make me so happy. There are certain things that I hope happen when you die that I don't think do. But one of the best things would be that if you could get just the answers to all of the questions you've ever had. Like, if God's there and he's, like, an omniscient and he's, like, <laughs> I want to just, like, pick his brains. I'd be, like, okay, so explain this. What ha did Babe Ruth call his shot? Is this manhole cover in space? <laughs> like, can you tell me what happened to the Mary Celeste? Like, specific, like, I know that there's a lot of theories out there, but I don't think we ever fully decided. Like, you know, things like that. I just want to know. There are certain mysteries. I need to know the answers. What happened to D.B. Cooper? Who the F? What? So, like, anyway, <laughs> these are the things I inquiring minds want to know. No other forces acting upon it, and it collides with Earth's atmosphere, and then it gets slowed down and it gets burnt up, okay? The manhole cover isn't just moving at 150,000 miles an hour through the atmosphere. It is being propelled by a channeled nuclear explosion with all of the gases, aka the atmosphere behind it, also moving 150,000 miles an hour in the same direction. Yes, science! Okay, and just to be clear, I'm not Hi! <laughs> I'm simply saying I'm incredibly ill equipped to answer this question accurately and no offense but there's about a 99.999 .99 chance that you are too so my verdict and i definitely am i have no idea be that it's still up in the air it was a horrible dad joke. I'm sorry. Moving on. Now, fast forward. Nuclear testing continued both underground, above ground, and in the atmosphere until 1960. It was a bad dad joke, but I appreciated it. When they signed a treaty with the Soviet Union and Great Britain that the only nuclear testing allowed was going to be underground. Now, fast forward again a couple of decades, and people's concerns over atmospheric nuclear bomb detonations turned out to be 100% legitimate because a ton of people ended up having elevated risks of cancer. Both the 18,000 soldiers that were present at Operation Plumb Bob 
had highly elevated likelihoods of developing leukemia and thyroid cancer, as well as thousands Great. of millions of well done. pounds near the test sites. And I know what you're thinking. How come those people got cancer, but the guys that literally stood underneath a nuclear bomb as it was detonated didn't well Lucky. the way that nuclear radiation works is that it dissipates pretty quickly over like two to three days and then it's completely gone which is why like all the old videos and protocols telling you what to do in case of a nuclear attack always told you you know duck and cover from the initial blast wave and then make your way inside and stay inside for like a week after that the radiation is decayed enough that it shouldn't hurt you so the guys that were exposed to that bomb directly overhead were exposed to it for presumably 10, 15 minutes before they dipped and left, whereas a lot of these soldiers were exposed mm. to repeated nuclear explosions over and over again, or these towns, the explosions would go up into the atmosphere and the radiation would be caught in the wind and it would just carpet that these tracks. towns with radiation for days yeah. over and over and over again over the course of years hundreds of nuclear detonations exposing these people to radiation now fast forward like three decades to 1990 the united states government with its infinite charity and outstanding moral compass finally decides that they're going to pass the radiation exposure compensation act where they're going to pay these people that were wrongfully exposed to radiation it only took them their negligence fucking 40 years and you could prove that it was because of them they would go ahead and they would give you 75 thousand if dollars in one lump sum if you were a soldier on the ground or if you were an innocent civilian just living your life in a town miles and miles away they would give you fifty thousand uh, dollars great thank you thank you for that u.s government mm, helpful super helpful i wasn't born yet but still there's no other legal course that you could take you can't sue them for more you can't reject it just here's what i'm gonna give you fuck off wow that sounds like a really good deal <laughs> I give you the finger. Okay, just so we're on the same page with this. The United States government takes your tax money, whether you want them to or not. You don't get an option. They're taking no, you don't. Okay. And you also don't get to choose what they do with it. I think that you should be able to, like, prioritize personally. <laughs> It's like, well, what if I want to put my tax money into infrastructure and making sure the roads are getting built and that schools, like, are getting... St it's like, what if that's what I want to put my tax money into? Other people will do other stuff. Like, you know. Then turned that money into radiation that they used to poison Americans with and give them cancer. Then, 30 years after the fact, they decided, you know what, we should make things right by giving the people that survived this long and can actually prove it was our fault, we'll give them like 50 grand. If they can prove it, it's their fault. If, 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 which they like, oh my God. It's so hard to prove fault a lot of the time. I mean, all the time, like innocent until proven guilty, et cetera, et cetera. But it's just like, God, proving that someone gave you cancer 30 years ago, that's not, that's gotta be difficult. Bear in mind that 50 grand is also money that was tax money that they took. So they, they took your money used it to poison you, and then to pay you off, they gave you some of your money back. I'm some. from the government, and I'm here to help. Can you understand how absolutely <laughs> crazy that is? Imagine if somebody walked up to somebody on the street and was like, hey, give me all the money in your wallet, or I'm going to throw you in a cage for years against your will. And you're like, uh, okay, and you give them all the money in your wallet. They turn around, they go buy brass knuckles, come back, and then punch you in the face with the brass knuckles that they just bought with your money. And then they look down at you and they're like, oh, oh, I really hurt you, my bad. And then they get into your pocket, find another $20 bill, pull that $20 bill out of your pocket, and then hand it back to you to pay you off for Thank punching you. you in the face. It's never too early to learn that the government is a greedy piglet that suckles on a taxpayer's teat until they have sore chapped nipples. I gotta end this video. Thank you, Ron. Eyes. Uh, in conclusion, this is the story of six crazy bastards that volunteered to have a nuclear bomb detonated directly above their head, and that time that America may have accidentally launched a manhole cover into outer space, potentially becoming the first man-made object ever, and that I really hope the so. US government poisoned tens of thousands of people with radiation, giving them cancer, and basically had no consequences for it whatsoever. Thanks for watching. Best way to Great, love the government. It's awesome. Quack Looking for you out for you government giving people cancer with zero consequences while trying to tell me i can't drink raw milk i don't even want to drink raw milk i'm just mad they think they can tell me i can't <laughs> okay
the raw milk. I mean, there's there's other things that I feel like maybe I do want to do <laughs> that I can't do because the government says I can't do it. But <laughs> okay, but he does make a valid point. I mean, he always makes pretty valid points. So there's that. Anyway, thank you all so very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to give him a little like as I just did for like for watching the video. Don't forget to give me a little like and let me know what I should react to next. I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.